What's the difference between Lightroom's color mixer and the color grading, formerly known as split toning? Let me explain this as we turn this raw file into this final image. As always, if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw files from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters of the video because first we will be going through the basic adjustments for this image. And I'm going to start this by merging an HDR file. So let's select all five images down below in the film strip, right click, go to photo merge and choose HDR. Once the preview loaded, right away hit the merge button. We don't need to change anything here. And there we have our HDR file. So let's do some basic adjustments. Expand the basic panel and I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will bring up the base saturation and it will alter the colors overall just a little bit as well. Then I'm going to bring up the exposure. I want this image to be slightly brighter. So right around here looks great to me. Due to the increased exposure, some of these highlights are now a little bit too bright. So we can fix that by bringing down the highlights. And I want to further work on the brightness of the image. So I'm going to bring up the shadows just so we have some details in the darkest spots of the image. I'm also going to bring up the blacks. All right, then it's time to work on the white balance because it looks a little bit too greenish and a little bit too cold for my taste. So what I want to do is to bring up the temperature just a notch, introducing some more warm tones. And I do want to bring down the tint very gently. Wonderful. I also want to make this image look a bit sharper. So I'm going to bring up the texture and let's also raise the clarity. Okay, color wise, it might look a bit weird. I think I need to tone down the vibrance just to reduce the overall saturation. But I think at this point, we do have a really good looking base image. We can compare to before real quick and you can see it's a lot brighter. We have more details in the shadows. The sky might be a problem, but that's something we are going to fix right now with the masking. So let's open up the masking panel. And let's do this real quick. I'm going to create a very simple sky selection mask right away. And I want to make the whole sky a little bit darker. So let's tone down the exposure very gently. I'm going to be stacking multiple of these adjustments on top of each other. So I'm only going to use tiny adjustments here. All right, that's the first one. Let's create another one. I am starting with another sky selection, but this time I only want to affect the top part of the sky. So I'm going to say subtract and let's choose a linear gradient and let's remove the bottom part like this. Again, I want to bring down the exposure just to make the top of the sky darker. This will basically just help guiding the viewer's eye more towards the center where our subject is. So this is kind of like a vignetting effect right now. I am going to push this further using a third mask for the sky. This time I'm using a linear gradient and I'm also going to tilt it a little bit to fit the shape of this building. All right, again, I am going to bring down the exposure. Let's bring it down quite a bit more. All right, maybe adjust the size a bit, but that's looking great. I do think I want to repeat this step one more time. So let's use another sky selection mask. And again, I'm using a linear gradient to subtract from this mask, just taking away a big chunk from the bottom part of the sky, which should stay brighter. And again, I'm going to bring down the exposure a notch like this. All right, I think this is looking really, really good. We can also increase the brightness of the sky in a certain area. So let's use another sky mask and again, subtract a linear gradient. This time I'm coming down from the top because we want the bottom part of the sky to be brighter. And in here, I'm going to pull up the exposure and I'm also going to increase the whites. Okay, I think we need to adjust this uh, linear gradient here to make this brightness effect a little more visible, but that's looking great. I also want to work on the subject. So let's try using the select subject mask right here. That is looking pretty good. What I want to do is to push the contrast. I also want to bring down the shadows. And at the same time, I'm going to push the whites and I'm going to bring up the clarity. I'm doing this to make the subject stand out a little more from the rest of the image, giving the whole structure a lot more contrast. I also think I'm going to bring up the saturation 
just to make the colors of the subject more intense. Of course, at this point, as we didn't do any color grading yet, it looks super strange, but don't worry about that. I do want to create another subject mask and I'm going to use the subtract function once more using a linear gradient to take away the top of the subject. And right in this area, what I want to do is to make it brighter by increasing the exposure. I think it makes it look more interesting this way. And finally, let's create an objects mask. I'm making sure the rectangle select mode is active right here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle around that patch on the bottom left side of the subject. That's a pretty good selection. What I want to do in here is to just get rid of the colors. I'm going to bring down the saturation quite a bit because this patch just looks strange. All right, and that's the image after the masking adjustments. Again, let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before, which is a rather flat image to after. Much better. Now let me explain what's the difference between the color mixer and the color grading. In general, with the color mixer, we can adjust individual colors in the image that already exist. However, with the color grading or formerly known the split toning, we can adjust the image by stylizing it with color tones we are choosing for the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So while both tools are great for color grading, split toning will add colors while the color mixer will adjust colors that are already existing in the image. Let's go through the color mixer so I can show you an example. In the color mixer, we can work with hue, saturation, and luminance of all these very specific color tones. Let's take a look at the hue first. What this means for this shot is, right now in the subject, you can see some very heavy green and yellow color tones. I'm not a big fan of that, so I want to change this. So I'm going to pick the yellow hue, and I'm going to drop it. And as I drop the yellow hue, all yellow tones already existing in the image will become more orange. Just like that. Instantly looks much better with these warmer tones. I can further push it by bringing down the green hue, which will also affect the foliage and the grass in this image. So let's tone it down a little bit, making these areas look more yellowish. Right around here looks good. Now, in the subject itself, we also have orange tones. If you adjust the orange hue, we can make the subject look more yellow as we bring up the orange hue, or we could make it look more red as we bring down the orange hue. I think a little more red looks perfect for the scene, so I'm going to bring down the orange hue just to right around here. And with just these three adjustments, let me show you what a difference this makes from before with this very ugly green color cast to after. And again, we didn't add any colors to the image. We have just changed the already existing colors of this scene. We can also work on the blue of the sky. I think a little more Zion would look quite good with the warmer tones of the subject. So I'm going to bring down the blue hue and in turn, we are going to create this very aqua zion ish looking sky, just like this. And for now, I'm pretty happy with the overall hues. Now that we have changed this, it's also time to think about the saturation. One thing that's really noticeable is the sky, which is kind of overwhelming with blue tones. So we want to tone it down, make it a little less impactful, and therefore I'm going to drop the blue saturation. I'm also going to bring down the purple saturation, which will mainly affect some of these roofs of these buildings. I think they are a little bit too strong, so that's the reason for me to bring down purple. Then I do want to bring up the orange saturation a notch, which will make the subject a little more saturated, but at the same time, I want to tone down the yellow tones. This will make especially the highlights of the subject a little less strong. So right around here, I think looks great. I'm also going to tone down the green saturation so the foliage becomes less saturated. All right, now that's it for hue and saturation. Now we have the luminance left and with the luminance, we are controlling the brightness of each of these color tones. So if you bring one of these sliders to the right side, we're going to make this specific color brighter while bringing it to the left side, we will make that color darker. This means we can use these sliders to target the subject, which consists of orange color tones and make it slightly brighter. Therefore, all we need to do is to bring up the orange luminance. 
And I do think I also want to bring up the yellow luminance, again, making the subject brighter. Keep in mind, and this will also push the very brightest highlights of this image right here. You can see it at some point in this area will just be overexposed, but I think it looks good this way. And we could add a little more contrast to the sky. So I'm going to bring down the blue luminance to make the sky darker, just like this, making the subject stand out a little more this way. Perfect. So that's pretty much it for the color mixer. Again, let me turn off this feature. This is what we have started with before the color grading. And that's the image after adjusting hue, saturation and luminance. Again, we didn't create any color tones for this image. We used existing colors and changed them to make the image look better. Now with the color grading, we are going to create colors for certain luminance ranges. Here you can already see the midtones, the shadows and the highlights. We can target each of those and give them very specific colors, which will help to create a unique style for an image. So for this shot, let us start with the highlights. Right now, the highlights of the image are on the warmer side and I want to emphasize this. That means I'm going to set up the hue first. So with the hue, we are picking a color we want to add to the highlights. I'm going with a very warm color tone right around here. At the moment, we are not seeing any change. That's because we need to adjust the saturation slider in order for it to kick in. So I want the highlights to be super vibrant. I'm going to push the saturation quite a bit. And now you can see the image is changing because we are adding this warm orange tone to the highlights, which was not here before that. Let me turn off the split toning to see the difference from before to after. You can see this will not only affect the subject, but also the sky, since we have some highlights in the sky as well. Now let's continue with the midtones. I think a little bit more color contrast could be useful here. So my plan is to not use a warm color tone, but I'm going to use a cold color tone, kind of on the opposite side of the color wheel. So right around here in the blue range. And again, at this point, we don't see anything because we need to push the saturation for that. So as we push the saturation, you can see we are introducing more cold color tones to the midtones of the image. And again, the sky will be affected since there are a lot of midtones. Of course, this is way too much because now we are losing the warmth of the highlights. So we need to tone down the saturation because the highlights are more important on this scene than the midtones. We want to make the highlights stand out, not the midtones. I think right around here is a really good spot. We do have some subtle blue hint in the midtones, but the highlights are just warmer now. So one more time, let me deactivate the split toning to see the difference from before to after. This is a rather subtle change for this image, but usually if you have been watching some of my videos, you know for these sunset images, the split toning is really, really important to create this very warm, colorful look. But nonetheless, I hope this made it a little bit clearer on the difference between the color mixer and the color grading. Of course, there are many more settings we can adjust in the color grading panel, but I want to keep this video shorter. So if you want to know more about the color grading, there are plenty more videos I have uploaded on that part already. So let's finish this image. What I want to do next is to head into the calibration tab here. We can do a little more color grading. What I'm going to do is to bring down the blue primary hue quite a bit, making the colors just look a little bit cooler this way. And I'm going to bring up the saturation to make it pop. All right. I do think we can also work on the red primary sliders. Let's push up the hue. And I do think I want to pull down the saturation a notch like this. And that's it for the color grading. Now for the calibration tab, I'm always just playing around with the sliders. Most of the times I'm just going with a negative blue primary hue. Finally, let's do the sharpening. I'm going to head into the details tab and let's bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up. Then we are going to apply some masking while holding down the alt key like this. Just need to target the edges of the subject and let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. So I hope this little tutorial on color mixer versus color grading was helpful. If you want to add anything or if you have any further questions, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.